talking about the Holy Grail. What's the idea behind? The people behind me will answer soon. Hello. I can say hello to Sabine Sariati from uh, Suez Group. Hello. To nice uh, Oliver here. Lamberts from uh, Tomra. Hello. And of course to Jan de Belda from Procter and Gamble. Hello. Hello. Nice to have you here. Thanks. So, nice to be here. Uh, the Holy Grail project. Uh, we've heard about that, and uh, yeah, but uh, I think there's still a lot uh, we are really keen to know, and uh, I think uh, you will present it. So how come that uh, you created this cooperation? What it was the, the trigger of, uh, it it of it the was idea? It was creating inside the Ellen MacArthur Foundation uh, three years ago. We have to pitch on uh, pioneer projects that we would like to work on, and Jan presented uh, a nice project and we were happy to contribute to this project uh, for three years. Uh, now it is completed inside the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and the project live his life alone with all the group and a bigger group now. Okay, so um, what did you experience uh, in this cooperation? Was it something new for you? Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I should first address uh, here um, Jan de Belder. Um, yeah, um, is it something new for you as a big brand to have uh, corporations like that? I think especially a um, couple of years ago, I think it was relatively new. Um, I think we are now running multiple uh, cross-value chain corporations, but I think Holy Grail within being worked within the new plastics uh, economy was, uh, was relatively new. Um, we actually started uh, with this project because we saw there was a need, and I'm just gonna um, take one uh, slide over here. We saw there was a need actually in, in sorting, right? So if you, if you look how, sir, how to uh, make circular economies work, there are basically these five famous pillars. So we as a brand owner, we needed to design our packaging so that it can be recycled, so it fits within a circular economy. Second one is people need to have access to collection, but also the consumers need to participate in collecting those materials, right? And then there was a whole uh, question mark on this one, right, on separation technologies. And then this project is the one I have been pitching indeed within the new plastics economy because I thought there was a need actually to innovate in the space of separation, right? And we will explain in a minute uh, what it means. but. I think if you look to the current low uh, recycling rates, um, definitely it has to do with collection and specifically participation of consumers, and secondly, al also sorting. So if you, s if you can crack those two, then obviously we can increase the recycling rates, right? So just to complement of, of what Sabine was saying, so I've been pitching this one three years ago within the new plastics economy. I've been looking for uh, partners and I'm glad to say that we ended up in 29 uh, different partners here and, and definitely the people here on stage uh, are definitely uh, core partners in the journey. Okay, fine. So, um, Oliver, um, how did you experience that? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, sorting is really a crucial step when it comes to circular economy and uh, plastics recycling. Uh, is there or do you feel a higher uh, demand for your expertise as a sorting um, company or providing sorting yeah. technology? I think the, the key, what Gian mentioned, is that um, you cannot solve these issues alone <coughs> with one industry. So you need this cross-value chain cooperation because recycling is not only sorting, it's not only washing, it's not only extrusion, uh, it's the whole system. And there we wanted to, to contribute, so it's our commitment to, to enable a move towards a circular economy. Yeah. So you have to join the expertise and the competencies and uh, collaboration is the key, I think. Exactly. So, uh, but uh, would you like to go a bit into detail uh, what, uh, yeah, is really holy grail? What uh, is your understanding of yes. it? Yes. So I think there are basically two, two, two aspects that we were trying to to do here, right? So the first is really to make the packaging intelligent. And within Holy Grail, we looked into a, s a couple of uh, several routes. On the one hand, there are many projects on, on tracers, so typically adding fluorescent items to a packaging item and then trying to, uh, to look for that fluorescent. What we um, thought it was very useful and which we actually brought to the table was the use of digital watermarks. Um, and Digimark, which is also present in this room, 
basically uh, helped us out together with Filigrade. So what it basically means is that you um, you just modulate uh, pixels here in, in artwork. So this is just a sample. Um, and in essence, I'm just using the green artwork from this area and put it in the white um, and vice versa. And then I just can use a very simple camera uh, to detect and I immediately get signals, right? So that's the essence of, of a, a digital watermark, which you also can see here, right? So we as a consumer, we see the pack as artwork, as printed label. Uh, but for my camera, it can see it as a multitude of barcodes, right? So that's is in essence how to make a package more intelligent. We've done it on many materials, plastics. Um, we also have done it on cartons, but we also have been doing this inside molds. So every time I produce um, a PT bottle like this, you actually can see it here. So you see a kind of, a, of structure in the bottle which also makes the package more intelligent. So think about systems where maybe the label has gone and you still want to make that pack more intelligent. Well, this is the way to do it, right? So that's the first step to make the package more intelligent. And maybe you want to talk a little bit about the machine itself. Yeah. Yeah. So then, uh, of course, we have this concept, scanning it with the uh, iPhone. <coughs> and now we want to transfer that to our industry, to a typical sorting process. And that happens typically on a conveyor, on a belt machine, which runs with about three to four meter per second. And then we need to detect this item. So what we did is actually that we developed a kind of add-on module uh, to an existing standard near infrared. Um, sorter uh, that this model would be uh, with the target to detect then specifically the watermarks and then this is connected also to a in eje ejection module so we can then blow it out like normally with compressed air from a mixed waste so that was the development work that we did with our partners from Digimark for instance in the project so maybe Sabine if you so this is the concept if you want to talk a little bit about the machine here um, so so n now we know that the, the proof of concept is done, uh, that is easy, but uh, it was not so easy to, to prove. We, we done uh, a lot of trial uh, thanks to samples uh, given by the brand owners. So as uh, Jan said, uh, uh, flat, uh, flat films, also black, uh, black sleeves and bottles. Uh, we have to set uh, the level of the camera, we have to set the, um, the speed of the belt. Uh, it uh, requires a lot of tries, a lot of time, but now it is done. Uh, the proof of concept is there, so we, we are able to sort in the way that we want to sort. Uh, before, the near-infrared sorting machine enable us to sort by type of polymer. Now we are able to add some information inside the sleeve, inside the label, inside the bottle, to say, I contain food inside, I'm not food, I, I, I contain a dangerous product, you cannot recycle me. And that's a, a revolution for us, for the, the recycling industry. We, we, we are going to be able to choose what we would like to recycle or not. Yes. And I think indeed, I mean, um, Sabine already mentioned we can make easy distinctions between food bottles and non-food, right? That's today which you cannot do with classical near infrared, so that's one. There is no problem at all to, um, to detect uh, full body shrink sleeves. There's no problem at all with detecting black items, right? Because we're just using uh, those, those watermarks. It also can help with safe introductions of new materials, for example. But I think also thinking about uh, the future, when I was visiting Fachpack here in Germany a couple of weeks ago, I've seen loads of, of items on, on paper packaging, right? So this is a paper pouch, basically. If I compare it now with a plastic pouch, matte finish, it's not ours. I couldn't find any of ours in matte finish, but just to give you, so this is paper, this is plastic. How does a consumer now know that that paper should go into their paper bin and the plastic still in the plastic bin, right? So again, bringing intelligence, maybe you should only um, uh, ask your consumers to sort any kind of packages in your yellow bin here in Germany and let the intelligence of the packaging uh, combined and obviously with the sorting machine do the intelligence itself, right? So as Sabine was mentioning, we have indeed the proof of concept done in May at the closeout of the new plastics economy. 
Um, this is basically the machine. I just will run it quickly. We have camera systems. We have high powerful LED lights, which you can see there. And as explained, it's just an add-on module onto an existing sorter, right? So we, uh, we don't need any kind of new equipment. It's just an add-on module, right? So this is just a very quick demonstration uh, where you clearly can see that each of these watermark samples are properly detected, OK? Um, so again, what's next? Um, we actually going to have much more samples. There is actually an uh, open house, a second open house, happening tomorrow at uh, Tomra. Um, at their headquarters here in, um, in Germany. Um, I think many of you have seen this already. Um, I think there are still a few seats left for the afternoon session. We are organizing uh, shuttle buses from here. Um, so if people still have an interest, um, see us. See, There are still some brochures. You just have to scan, register. And I said there are still some, um, some seats left. Now, if you can't make it, there's loads and loads of uh, suppliers here on the show as well that are showcasing all kinds of different uh, samples, right? So this is just a couple of samples I've taken out of, um, of the boots, but Visit Verstraten, they have multiple uh, coded samples, obviously Tomra. Boreal is also, um, you can go to their boot and have the, uh, the coffee beakers. They're all integrated with uh, digital watermarks. If you scan them, uh, it gives you a signal that those cups are actually um, being uh, recyclable here in Germany, right? Um, Again, I think in, in just in a nutshell, what we have been doing so far, um, I think the digital watermark technology is a very interesting one. Um, you basically have one technology that can provide value across the full value chain, starting with filling and controlling uh, quality assurance and the counterfeiting. For consumers, um, as I just have been showing, um, there is now an interaction possible with, uh, with your mobile phone. So think about campaigns, augmented reality pictures, if people want to see it. The, um, this happy cow is a very nice one to scan. It's really with augmented reality, explaining what the content is and how to properly recycle the pack and so forth. Um, also for retailers, I said there is no uh, 2D barcode anymore, so you just can easily scan it um, randomly. So you gain time as a retailer. And basically what we have been doing or what we are trying to do now is to bring the technology really here to the end to the recycling bit. So use that technology as well to close the loop on recycling. So the nice thing is, as I said, one technology provides value across the full life cycle of a pack from birth to, to rebirth. And, and I think that's really unique on that one. Yeah, I think uh, you um, yeah, create a, a lot of benefit and you make things uh, much easier for, for everyone. Uh, so in the morning we had the discussion about uh, waste collection and uh, yeah, if uh, you could uh, use a technology like that, uh, that uh, yeah, very much differentiated collecting uh, wouldn't be that necessary as it is now. Did I get you right here? Sorry, say that again because I lost. Yeah, so um, it's easier for, for the end users to uh, dispose of their um, plastic waste because uh, they, have do uh, they haven't got to do uh, a very, yeah, um, a sorting with a lot of varieties. Correct. So uh, it's not necessary for them. They can bin it uh, into yeah, one garbage bin and uh, then everything is done for them. And uh, nevertheless, uh, the recycling processes are not in a way um, affected by that. Yeah, I because the yeah. sorting technology um, is the key here. Yeah. I think it's an Im yeah. a very important uh, topic you, m you raised there, right? So we want to keep it very simple to consumers, yeah. right? If it's a pack, you want to collect it in your recycling bin. And then the technology will sort it out at their sorting plants with their equipment. That's yeah. basically it. That's the concept. Yeah. What is also important is that the, the watermark will disappear during the recycling process. And you can have a new bottle with another watermark it's like a virgin, virgin material. You don't keep the, the tr mm. chemical tracer as it was the, the first project. It's like a virgin bottle at the end. And, and it really offers traceability. So yeah. you could really analyze for each and every packaging how much of it finally would make it into the recycling stage, which is today really difficult yeah. to get this So number. which is an additional benefit in yeah. uh, here. Sure. Okay. So, um, 
Well, that sounds really very nice. Uh, so I think uh, this project could serve as a role model uh, for waste collecting uh, in general. So would make things easier. And in the end, uh, we have uh, better qualities of the recyclate, which is crucial for the acceptance except of, uh, for the, of better materials. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so is there something you would like to add? Uh, it, it was, it was uh, the first time I, I participated to a huge project with all the value chain. It's very important today that we all work together. We, are, we, are, we cannot say that's your fault, that's my fault, you don't do your job. We all, we love to, we all have to work together and this is um, uh, a nice project. I was very, very pleased to be inside. Okay, thank you. Yes, I can agree. It uh, was a nice partnership, exciting topic. And as, on, as an old football player, I always said, if you want to score a goal, uh, you need to go where <coughs> the goal is going to be and not where he has been. So embrace uh, innovation and the future. And I think that was about this topic. Okay, so some closing remarks yes, from uh, your side? Yes, closing remarks and maybe <laughs> also uh, next steps. Um, I was very pleased actually to have received this one, which you also can see on the boot, right? So we got the... Um, Sustainability awards with this uh, project uh, for driving the circular economy, but then we also got the overall winner of this contest, right? So we, we got that uh, three four weeks ago at at Fachpack. and I think that's uh, a very nice signal that th that we are on the right track. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have been closing this project now within the new plastics uh, economy, but we are moving this one on to form a much bigger consortium, right? So as I said, we were 29 partners originally. Today, we are already having more than 55 partners that are willing to continue the journey with us. And obviously, all of uh, those people that were in um, Project Holy Grail 1.0 um, have committed to continue the work, right? So we are currently in the process of um, forming this big mega consortium. There are more than 20 brand owners, and I can tell you there are some big brand owners there that have signed up. There are more than 10 retailers already. So it's a it's going to be a, a consortium of predominantly brand owners, uh, retailers. I mean, that's, that's obviously the objective. And we all want to move into a test market. Before doing that, obviously, we need to upscale the current machine. So as I said, we're going to do another demonstration tomorrow at uh, Tomra. It's currently a kind of a lab machine, 1.5 meter wide. We have to bring that to an industrial machine of three meters wide. So we believe it's not really rocket science. We go from three cameras to seven, but obviously the right links need to be made with that industrial machine. Once that's done, we believe it's going to take nine to 12 months. Once that's done, we consider the machine to be commercially available. Then we're going to um, investigate the test market somewhere in Europe. We're going to, together with that mega consortium, we're going to decide which country we would like to test. We're going to adapt a couple of sorting centers with these add-on modules. And then all of these brand owners and retailers should commit to bring certain amount of SKUs in the market. So assume five to 10 per brand owner. So we have a critical scale and we can learn from an industrial uh, scale point of view, we can learn in that test market, right? If everything goes smooth and successful, I would say, and we are ready, then we can think about broadening it uh, in more countries in Europe and specifically also in the US. That's a little bit the, um, the next steps. Okay. Uh, so you are so there, there will be, so I'm, I will be, well, for the time being, I'm still the interim project leader. Um, we are at the final discussions, I would say, with an European association that's going to lead this project. So I will move to become a, uh, just a member, as, uh, as all the other brand owners and retailers and technology providers. Um, and we hope to announce the, uh, that, cons that uh, association that will lead it towards Christmas. That's the plan. Okay, so wonderful. Thank you for sharing this really interesting project with us. And uh, of course, thank you for watching and uh, see you at K. Bye-bye. <laughs>